Hi, I'm Howie Clark. And I'm Joel Jameson. And on this week's episode of Eight Weeks Out TV, we're gonna show you how to get the most out of your training using a heart rate monitor. All right, so the first step in getting the most out of your heart rate monitor is in the setup. And as you can see, Howie will push it up for us. You can see he's got the polar, uh, the new polar transmitters on here, which are great because these straps are extremely comfortable compared to the older plastic ones. They have great uh, signal and they work very well. So this is also the polar transmitter, which uh, snaps in and out. Uh, it's very thin, it's comfortable to wear. These came out a few months ago, they're great. I'm going to put it back on there. You want to make sure you have good, Scott, good skin contact. So you want to have it tight enough that it's, it's not sliding around and you don't want to have, don't want to have it so tight that you're uh, feeling constricted. So you want to play around with making sure it's uh, the, right, the right tension, which go ahead and turn around for us. Okay, of course, tension can be adjusted there and you can just play around with that until you find the right uh, combination of tension. And then the watch is the second component. You want to make sure you have the watch on, uh, of course, during the entire session, and you want to make sure you do set in your age, your weight, your height, and some of the stuff it asks you when you first set up. This is the Polar RS100. It's a, it's a great watch. It's what I use myself, all my athletes, and what I sell on the site because it's a great value and gives you all the functions that your 99% of people are going to need out there. Um, and so as long as you've got the heart rate monitor strap on correctly, you've got the watch, you've got that all set up, uh, you should be good to go. All right, so once you've got your heart rate monitor set up properly and you're ready to begin your workout, you just want to hit the little red lap button on the RS100 or whatever heart rate monitor you're using. And that's going to start the heart rate reading with the transmitter. You want to make sure that it's reading and it's giving an accurate number. Um, sometimes you can actually press the wrong button and it'll be displaying the percentage of your max heart rate. So it's going to look like your heart rate's 30 or 40 and that's obviously wrong. So you want to make sure it's displaying your actual heart rate during the workout because um, that's usually what you want to measure. If you have a polar compatible piece of equipment or whatever else, uh, your monitor you're using, you want to make sure that's reading properly with the equipment. And then when you're actually ready to start training or doing some sort of uh, work, the nice thing about the RS100 and that series is you have this little lap feature, and the lap feature is going to keep track of heart rate information over each segment. So, for example, let's say we want to do some sprint work with Howie here or some, some jogging, whatever. You're going to hit the lap button to get it started. Okay, he's going to go ahead and do some work. Uh, let's say he's going to do 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 5 minutes, whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, we're going to be able to use the lap feature to keep track of his heart rates and different information about his heart rate during that period. So let's say that's interval one. Okay, he hops off, he hits the button again there, and now that's going to mark off that segment within the watch, and we can go back after the workout and look at his average heart rate, his max heart rate, um, his calories, and different information about each of those segments. Okay, now let's say he's going to get ready to do the next one. He's going to hit the button again. Okay, and he's going to go for round two. And again, now it's able to track you know, the second segment. And the nice thing is we can also look at the rest intervals and get the information from there as well. Okay, let's say there's round two. He hops off, hits the lap button again. Okay, I think you get the idea. And the, the real benefit to doing this is we're able to track information about each of those segments. We're able to see his, his heart rate information during the work interval. We're able to see his heart rate information during the, the rest interval. And that's going to give us a lot of information. We go back to see what kind of shape he's in because we can see what his power output was for a given heart rate. We can look at how quickly his heart rate came down and measure his heart rate recovery. And we can go ahead and you know, keep that as a measuring stick as we start to improve his conditioning, his aerobic fitness or anaerobic or whatever it is we're, we're trying to do. And it's, it's a great way to use the heart rate monitor and get feedback from it and, and use it as a conditioning tool. It's, it's a real simple way to, to gauge that. So um, that's really one of the, the, the key components to using the heart rate monitor is the lap feature and keeping track of your heart rates during different segments of your workout. All right, so the next way we use the heart rate monitor is to train within specific heart rate zones. So let's say, for example, we've tested how he's uh, anaerobic threshold. Let's say it's 170 and we want to train within that range we can use the RS100 to set different limits, and then that limits are going to go into the watch. It's gonna give us a beeping signal for outside those limits and give us a, you know, a good feedback tool to make sure we're training in the right zone. So you know, let's say we've set his watch to, to keep him with 165 to 175 beats per minute, let's say. We can have him go ahead and get started on Jacob's ladder. Okay. And as he goes, of course, we can see his heart rate real time and we can gauge whether or not he needs to go harder, easier, faster, or slower. Okay, and as he starts to get in that range, we're gonna be able to get a gauge of where he's at. 
Um, and if he goes too high, it's going to give us a beeping signal to let us know that his heart rate is, is above his threshold, above that zone we've set. Uh, or if he's going too slow, it's going to tell us that his heart rate is below that because we can see it's there. Uh, we won't make him work too hard. Go ahead and hop down, Howie. Okay, but it's a real simple and easy way to gauge what heart rate zone he's training in because we can program that into the watch and it's going to tell us if he goes outside of that. Um, and then the other nice thing, the other way that we'll use this um, is really as a heart rate recovery um, assessment. So let's say we want to make sure his heart rate was uh, 120, 130 before he begins again. Of course, we can, we can see that. And as we talked about last segment, we can set the different segments to record those so we can see how quickly his heart rate comes down in between uh, intervals. And that's one of the biggest tools to measure conditioning is how quickly your heart rate comes down because that tells us about the aerobic and the anaerobic contribution. Um, and so we'll go ahead and say we set each segment. We're just going to look for that particular heart rate that we're looking for in the recovery. And then we're going to send it back to work. Okay, in the particular zone. And now the other nice thing is, let's say we want to see how long he can stay within that anaerobic threshold. We can track that as well, because as soon as he goes above that threshold, uh, let's say we want to cut the rep short there, and that's where we want to stop. So let's say he, now he's, he's above that threshold, he's above that range, go ahead and stop. Okay, now we can track how long he was in that different range, uh, the different range of heart rates before he was going too high. And so that's, again, another way to measure progress. If you're able to stay within a particular range and, and cover more distance for a longer period of time, it's a clear indication that you're in better shape. If his heart rate comes down faster from a given level of work, again, it's another indication that he's in better condition and his in fitness and endurance is improving. So um, by, by using the monitor to, to keep track of what zones he's in and to set that standard, we can get a lot of information out of that and get feedback about where his conditioning is at and, and whether or not it's improving. All right, so you know, there's some simple ways that people can use a heart rate monitor to get more out of their training. Yeah. I you know, before I met you, I never used heart rate monitor for my training. And um, I think a lot of people just don't know how many ways you can use it. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to learn from you and reading your book. I learned a few methods, but uh, I think those are a few simple tips that people can, can apply right away. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy. I think people are almost uh, intimidated by heart rate monitors. They've got a few buttons and they look complicated. But realistically, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. We showed them some very simple and easy ways, uh, literally just pressing one button or a couple buttons on the the heart rate monitor that they can they can use it and get better results in less time and they can have uh, you know literally the cheapest coach out there it's 100 bucks and you can get better results why not do it yeah that's what it's all about yeah absolutely so uh, next week's episode we'll talk a little bit more about using the heart rate monitor show you some different methods uh, in the meantime make sure and visit us at facebook.com slash eight weeks out uh, you can like our page and get entered to win a free bioforce hrv pro system uh, also you can join me there at uh, facebook.com slash eight weeks or slash joel jameson you can send me a friend request you can't send him one because he's not on Facebook? Nope. No Twitter. Joel Nothing. Jameson at Twitter. No, it's twitter.com slash Joel Jameson. Yeah, you don't even know. That, do, you know do you even know what that, Twitter is? That's exactly why. Do you know what Twitter is? Yeah. What's it, what is it? Social media, man. <laughs> Social media. All right, there you go. Social media. So make sure you're in business there and uh, check us out just at eightweeksout.com. And uh, you can give us your name and email so we can make sure and send you when the uh, next episode of Eight Weeks Out TV is coming up. And we'll see you again soon.